How's it going, everybody? This is Dailies to Downloads. My name is Chad. With me is Eric. And we are approaching Oscar Day as we record this. It is this Sunday. We are all anxious to see how it comes off. Um, who knows at this point what's going to happen. But we will be reviewing it after it happens. And uh, hopefully I have had, you know, enough beers that I enjoy it and don't forget it right Eric yeah and and will you count this as uh because I believe Steven Soderbergh is like the main producer of the telecast and obviously since Brad Pitt won at the last Oscars he'll be presenting supporting actress I imagine this year so do we count this as another Soderbergh Brad Pitt uh collaboration is this like Ocean's 14 or uh, (laughs) it should be if there's a heist if there's a heist skit oh yeah then yeah. I feel like this should be ranked along. Yes, yes. I'll put it on letterbox. This will definitely be a part of my list. Definitely. <laughs> All right. Well, so this week we decided we would go through some of the trivia and stats on this year's Oscars and uh, just kind of have a discussion about some of the things that are going on. And I'm going to start with one of the ones that I thought was the most fun, Eric. And I'll, I'll bet you, you didn't know this, but I could be wrong. <laughs> The cast of Venom all have Oscar nominations now. Tom Hardy, Michelle Williams, Riz Ahmed, Woody Harrelson. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. How about that? I mean, you know what, though? I feel like in the past maybe 20 years or so, uh, I'm just kind of making this up, but like since these superhero films have gotten more and more notable casts, because um, Venom... By the time Venom came out, I guess it had three Oscar nominees, right? At that point? Yeah, yeah. So, so Riz Ahmed happened to this year, but they had already, you know, when they were hired to do Venom, they, they were all um, Oscar-nominated actors, the three of them. In 30 um, years, maybe Goon number two will have an Oscar nomination as well. Oh, yeah, you never know. You never... Did you uh, see Venom? It, what? Did you see it? Uh, Venom? That, Venom? No. You're not no. missing no, I remember I had two choices. It, you want some weird trivia? It opened the same day as a *Star Is Born* remake. Oh, okay. And they were both both shot by Matty Libatique. Oh, wow. um, and I chose *Star Is Born*, and I I, 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 I think that was the right choice. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's I not the, a, that's not a Sophie's choice there. That's <laughs> no, yeah, a *Star Is Born* or *Venom*. Like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> like, you know. Um, yeah, I, I, I have yeah, that's that was you probably made the right choice. Um, so the White Tiger, the fact that it got a soul nomination in adapted screenplay keeps the soul screenplay nomination streak going for 20 years in a row now, which I yeah. didn't realize. I mean, just going back and looking, you know, so obviously it goes back to 2001 when Ghost World and the Royal Tenenbaums were both nominated. I, I had no idea that that streak was going on. I mean, I guess it's not that momentous of a streak but like it's interesting that that has happened so many times yeah and and i i think there's always certain films in that award season where they kind of become known as like they start targeting those kind of awards those categories from like the writers guild and stuff like that um and whether or not it's like fair or unfair to kind of say it's only a writer's screenplay kind of movie um but it does seem like especially comedies i feel like will often get the push for like screenplay and that's kind of it. Just kind of throw, that, throw them something. Yeah, yeah. So so that's that's usually a category that can get something that's a little bit more outside of the box, um, perhaps. That's what I was expecting, like Palm Springs and stuff. If it was to get a nomination, it'd probably be like an original screenplay category for that kind of reason. Um, but I, I do feel like, in this year, in Adapted, we have the Borat sequel you know um right. which are always like a little so there is a little bit more of a wide range of genres and, and yeah i mean they are showing like I, I said in previous episode uh like they are showing baby steps in expanding their horizons and yeah i think that that's the key is that it's going to be a slow push in the right direction of like being really kind of all-encompassing and looking at all films it's not going to happen overnight you know but they are they are gradually kind of getting to the point where they look at all genres and all countries and try to include everything as best they can 
Yeah, and I, I would be interested, I'll look up, I guess, in my own time, that, like, how many of those sole screenplay nominees have actually won? Right. I, I doubt any, but... Yeah, probably not many. Won. Yeah, they have some great choices. It's just, for, for original screenplay, at least, and it's just... Right. Um, it just never... Could you imagine if Ex Machina had, had won original screenplay? That would have been cool, but... Yeah. Um, so, this year, there's a lot of trivia regarding regarding uh, people nominated in terms of race, uh, which is a good thing. So there's a lot of firsts, you know, going on this year. Uh, so let's start with some of those. Viola Davis is now the most nominated black actress with four. And her and Andra Day, it's the first time since 1972 that two black women were nominated in Best Actress. Which is great because Cicely Tyson who was one of those two women that yeah, just passed Cicely away. Tyson and Diana Ross. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, uh, yeah, both Andre Day and Diana Ross played legendary jazz singer Billie Holiday, which is interesting. Sure. And uh, hey, Ma Rainey was a real person as well. Not not in the same category of legendary status, but right, also right. A, real, a real singer in real life. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Mia Neal and uh, Jamika Wilson are the first Black persons of any gender nominated for makeup and hairstyling, which is a good thing. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom is just the third film to feature Black nominees for both Best Actor and Best Actress after 1972 Sounder and What's Love Got to Do with it? it. Yeah. yeah. Four, yeah. You, you got it. See, you're, you're practicing this trivia stuff. That one, that I remember because it, not only for the race of, of the actors as well, but like now it's so rare, not since um, uh, As Good As It Gets has this one, the same film won Best Actor and Best Actress. Um, yeah. And I just feel like they were talking about Ma Rainey maybe changing that this year. Who knows? Um, and it's just, I, I do think that we may never really have that again. I think now that they're pushing people more and more to supporting that the days yeah. of like having two leads win from the same movie, it just feels like, I don't know, just doesn't feel like we're going to have that again. Speaking of, do you think it's ever, and like, I should probably have this brought up, but do you think it's ever going to happen again that we're going to see a four nominees from the acting categories all be from the same movie and win? Do you think that's no, ever going to happen no. again? I, 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 oh God. Has any film ever won all four? No, right? Only three. I think it was like Streetcar won three, Network won three, and was there one more film? I'm blanking now, um, but yeah, I, I, I just I don't think so. Nope. I, I, yeah, I don't think that at the days of that being even a possibility, I think are going to be few. yeah. Even to um, I remember when Silver Linings Playbook came out, they got uh, nominations in all four of the acting categories. Right, um, and that was the first time that had happened, I believe, since Reds. Right, even, and, even that has a short list. Yeah, and and then the following year, David Russell did it again with American Hustle. He got another four in four categories. Right, um, but even that's rare um, yeah. for for various reasons. But yeah, I, yeah, I don't, I just don't see that with the way that the, it's very strategic yeah. the way their people are placed into categories now. And, yes, you know yes. the campaigning is more. I don't know. Maybe I'm totally wrong here. It seems to be more selective with regard to the casts. Like it, certain people don't get as much campaigning as others. Case in point, Lakeith Stanfield is only the second nominated actor with zero main critics or guild mentions after Marina de Tavira and the first ever to be campaigned in lead only to be nominated in supporting. Yeah. Um, I think that's also, uh, we will probably also never again see a film with two lead nominations of the same sex. Like, you could say that Judas and the Black Messiah has two male leads and they're both in supporting. Uh, like, I just I just don't think the last film was uh, Thelma and Louise, where they had two actresses up for lead. But I, I just don't, for that reason, because of the campaigning stuff, they want one actor to get out of the way of the other one. So they'll push right. them to the other category. Um, same thing sort of last year with Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio, perhaps you could say. Like back in the day, they'd probably both be in lead, but now I right. feel like we're just never going to have that again. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, Daniel Kaluuya is the first Black British actor to receive more than one nomination, which is good. He'll probably, eh, not probably, probably. 
Yeah, he'll be. He's. I think he. He probably will be the winner there. Um, yeah. Let's see. It's the first time in history three black actors, uh, Daniel Kaluuya, Leslie Odom Jr., and O'Keefe Stanfield, compete in the same category. Wow. And and also Leslie Odom uh, keeps another tradition alive, where I think the past four years we've had a actor slash singer uh, get nominations for an, an acting and for song. Right. Yeah. Um, that was that was on this list as well. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Leslie Odom Jr. is up for the both, and and last year was Cynthia Revo, and before that I want to say it was was it um uh. Who was it from Mudbound? Mary J. Blige? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Lady Gaga. Was, yeah. 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 Um, we have Christina O oh from uh, Minari is the first Asian American woman to receive a Best Picture nomination. Steven yeah. Yun from the same movie is the first ever Asian American nominated in Best Actor. And Yoon Yu Young is the first Korean nominee in an acting category and the third East Asian supporting actress nominee joining Miyoshi Umeki, I hopefully I'm not butchering these names, uh, who won for Sayonara and Rinko Kikuchi for Babel. Babel, yeah. Uh, so a lot of firsts there packed into one and I hope that this continues because you know, in looking at the past two, three decades, there are a ton of Asian movies where the actors really could have been nominated and should have been nominated. And it looks like now with the fact that Parasite won last year mm -hmm. and now, you know, Minari is getting so much attention. It looks like we're getting more accepting of that. Yeah. I think that's a good thing. So, and, and probably a, a part of that, especially for this year and for Parasite last year. Yeah. That where these are also films that pretty much feature completely um uh of a different ethnicity background cast um, you know almost uh, obviously parasite last year uh minari ex except for the, the the farmer guy and a couple other you know supporting roles but it's primarily um an asian cast and juice and the black messiah is again outside of jesse plemons and martin sheen for a few minutes is mostly uh all black cast so right um i feel like in the case of babel babel was all about being totally international from right. all different countries and things like that uh whereas now i feel like these films have more of a concentration about these specific uh groups of people and uh, yeah and you know it'll probably show it'll pro people will probably be more brave about doing that and like thinking well it is possible that we'll get awards attention now you know we don't have to <laughs> play by a certain set of rules necessarily Absolutely, yeah. And with Viola Davis, I mean, uh, um, doubt she was really like the only black character in that in the movie, and that plays a, por a part in the role. Um, yeah. And 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 the help. I mean, obviously, it's a different dynamic. Um, but yeah, for the August Wilson fences and Ma Rainey is primarily all oh, African American. Say, yeah. yeah, and I'm sure that that'll be happening more and more because Denzel Washington has plans to adapt. Yeah or help adapt rather all of his all 10 at least a yeah. lot anyway so yeah which is i good. think his son is like attached to the next one oh okay that would be interesting so this one i think you already knew but uh francis mcdormand is the first woman to be nominated for acting in best picture in the same year for the same film with uh, nominations in the 80s, 90s, uh, 2000s, 2010s, and now the 20s, Frances McDormand joins Catherine Hepburn, Laurence Olivier, Paul Newman and Meryl Streep, Jack Nicholson, and Michael Caine to have nominations across five decades. Which is kind of crazy to me for Frances McDormand because I feel like her, like Meryl Streep, like, of course, like, you know, right. so you hear that all the time. Frances McDormand, I feel like some of them are a little bit more quiet. Maybe that's just me. Um, where like I forgot like uh, North Country, uh, you know, it, it, like a few, yeah. and um, that she was nominated for Almost Famous, too, as well, and and like, but I'm like, oh yeah, okay, wow, that's it's a crazy set, 80s, 90s. It's an interesting group for her to be in. I mean, you look at those names, and I mean, that's an elite group of of people right there. And you know what? Yeah, yeah, she yeah. Deserves, I guess she deserves to be there. She's been that good for that long, so. Yeah, I, I could see like Amy Adams getting that stat. Uh, yeah, 
maybe 20 years, I guess, but yeah. absolutely. We'll check back in 20 years to see if I was right. Yeah, we'll do that show later. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we have, uh, let's, Riz Ahmed for Sound of Metal. He's the first actor of Pakistani descent nominated, the first Muslim actor nominated for Best Actor, and the first Best Actor nominated performance primarily in American Sign Language since Alan Arkin in 1968 for The Heart is a Lonely Hunter. Wow. Oh. Interesting. And so I guess uh, I also started thinking of um, Rinko Kikuchi for, for Babel. That's pretty much a, a nonverbal performance. Yeah. Right? I don't know. She's probably not signing. I don't I don't recall now. Um, but I don't think she really speaks in the movie. Yeah, Shelly Zhao for Nomadland, first woman of color nominated for Best Director. First Chinese woman nominated for Best Director. First female director also nominated for editing. First woman to earn four Oscar nominations in a single year. Wow. So again, a lot of firsts this year, which is, you know, these are all good things. Hopefully the pods, because usually when the Oscars happen, we, or the nominations even come out, we hear about the negative and what didn't get nominated. And this year we don't have that. And yeah. I don't, I also don't think that there's a lot of arguing to the contrary this year. Like you don't hear people saying, well, you know, if this person wasn't nominated, then this movie could have gotten in there. You know, you don't yeah. have like, these are all deserving nominees. Yeah. And, and I feel like every year the question is always like, are the Oscar nominations reflecting the movies that are out there? Or are, you know, for, to what you're saying, that's like, well, this wasn't a great year for um asian american cinema or you know i'm just picking making you know making that up but um whereas now like you said like it has like very specific films that have and not only are they very good because quality can be subjective especially when it comes to the academy awards and stuff but like minari and stuff seems to have also become like very popular which um i don't know if the being streaming etc and everything helps I, i'm not sure but like it, these are definitely films that have actually really caught on too. I feel yeah. like people are aware of them in ways where also another thing we hear about the Oscars is that people haven't seen these movies and we need to, you know, expand to 45 nominees, et cetera. But, you know, but, yeah. so, <laughs> Hopefully helps. we can hope. I, I'm sure you and I both agree. We hope we get to 45 best picture nominees. You need 45 nominees. So we get every single film released nominated for best yeah. picture. Then nobody can be upset. <laughs> yes. Well, no, we'll have 44 losers, but you know, yeah. true. <laughs> Uh, Sir Anthony Hopkins, first person to get back-to-back -back acting nominations in their 80s, uh, the oldest lead actor nominee of all time, and the third person to receive two-plus acting nominations in his 80s. Um, so Jessica Tandy and Christopher Plummer also got two nominations in their 80s, but they weren't back-to-back. -back, so, Yeah, that's wild for Anthony Hopkins, too, considering he, like, he got his first nomination and win I guess when he was it's like 60 or around that, around yeah. that age, you know, 30 years ago for Signs of the Lambs that, um, which is crazy did, when you think about all the acting that he did before that, but. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You're going back to the line in winter and all, all the way back. Like, yeah. Absolutely. Glenn Close for Hillbilly Elegy. She's the fifth person to get four or more nominations in both lead and supporting category. Um, the other people there are Geraldine Page, Jack Nicholson, Meryl Streep and Al Pacino. The fourth person to have received eight act acting Oscar nominations without a win. Geraldine Page, Al Pacino, Peter O'Toole, also on that list. Tied for the mo as the most nominated actor of all time. Geraldine Page, Denzel Washington, Jack Lemmon, Peter O'Toole, Marlon Brando with eight. Uh, at least with Geraldine Page and Al Pacino, they won on their eighth nomination. I think Glenn Close is going to make a new record. Yeah, uh, no, I agree. I At this point... At this point, the momentum is not in her favor at all. Yeah. Peter O'Toole had eight and never won. Um, they gave her an, an honorary one. They'll probably give Glenn Close an honorary one as well. Uh, but here's the key. Will she break this record and be nominated in the future again? I think that's very possible. And and then lose that time? <laughs> I mean, I mean it, comes to, it comes to a point, too, where it feels like we it used – and I'm glad we've gotten away from this a little bit. A little bit like the whole like overdue narrative um that used to always and it still is a thing for some people but for glenn close i kind of feel bad it's like it can be silly i mean i mean it's the nature of competition you know obviously there's you know 
roles that she's had over the years that were probably deserving of an Oscar, but those roles might have been in a year when there was a lot of really good roles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of really good performances. So you can't, not everybody can win, and that's the point. Yeah, and and, and I think Glenn Close also in her, her recent This mm-hmm. and the Wife, uh, she's like the only nominee from the movie, the only nomination the movie gets. And right. I just felt like people didn't really see the wife or, or people that, you know, and yet she's still so due. So I feel like she just needs to be in the, uh, pick a big name director, pick a big name topic from an adapted of a novel. So I don't know. I know Hibley LG is adapted from a novel, but like something else. It must, it must kill her though to get this close. I mean, this is, she's becoming- yeah, No pun intended. Susan oh, yeah. Lucci of- uh... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just- and I should add that she's also the third ever actor to be nominated for Razzie and Oscar nominations for the same role. James Coco in 1981's Only When I Laugh and Amy Irving in Yentl from 1983 also got Razzie and Oscar nominations. So wow. That's is uh, that's I, a category right there. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 have you seen Yentl? It's okay. She was okay. I don't know. That's, I that, that's, I've never seen Yentl. I no. want to. There's a lot. Yeah, I I would like to, but I've. Not. Well, when you have a few hours. <laughs> yeah. You know. Um. So statistically, the biggest snubs were Jared Leto for The Little Things, uh, Helena Zengel for News of the World, Bill Murray for On the Rocks, and Chadwick Boseman for Defy Bloods, uh, because those aforementioned roles all got at least two nominations elsewhere so. yeah and and i'd read um you may have this stat too where for jody foster she she was the first golden globe winner for supporting actress not to get an oscar nomination since yep. 1976 yeah good for you Catherine ross in 1976 yeah yeah which is crazy because that was the year she got her first nomination for taxi driver uh right. oh wow yeah that's you know and it's just again we don't really take much stock in the golden globes but it is funny that she's the first golden globe winner to then not get an oscar nomination in uh, that category speaking of the golden globes i don't think a lot of people are going to be putting much stock in the golden globes for a while after this that's a separate topic yeah yeah which is, which is good I, I, it's been like a joke for a long time but because it's televised people had to kind of take it seriously somewhat but hopefully yeah. that's stranger. um yeah and you know Another one that I found interesting is that First Cow is the first New York, I'm sorry, NYFCC Best Film winner. Eric, what does that stand for? NYFCC. New York Film Critics Circle. Circle, that's what, okay. It was the last C yeah. that threw me. Um, anyway, it's the first Best Film winner in uh, that cat- that uh, Film Critics Circle in the 86 year history to have zero Oscar nominations. Wow. Isn't wow. that insane when you think about it? Yeah. I mean, the critics groups, I mean, that is a crazy stat. Yeah. Um, I, I, but I can also understand that like first cow would not work for the Academy. No, uh, absolutely not. Like, so I get yeah. that. I mean, the stat is a little surprising, but I, I could, yeah. I don't know that that director is ever going to make a movie that fits. Kelly Riker. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that's, that's her, that's her kind of thing. You know, she, uh, she lives in Hoboken. She teaches and uh, bard and, she gets to make the kind of movie she wants to make, I guess. Yeah. She lives in Hoboken? She does, yeah. I did not know that. Wow. Because we can hang out and listen to some Frank Sinatra one time. Well, well I, have, I have family that live in Hoboken, so I'll have to... Uh, hey, you may be two degrees, two degrees from Kelly Riker. You ever play that game? <laughs> <laughs> That's a new one. That's a new one. It's yeah. coming out, too. Um, so, Soul is the first animated film to get a sound nomination in 10 years. Toy Story 3 was the last one and score a nomination and a score nomination in 10 years. I'm sorry, yes, a sound nomination and a score nomination in 10 years. Uh, uh, How to Train Your Dragon also. Wow. Did that. Which is also now more, probably more impressive that this is the first year they've combined the sound categories. Yeah. Um, we spoke about in the past, so now there's only five slots, it's not 10. So. And this is the first time ever that two Pixar films have been nominated in the same year for animated feature with Onward and Soul. Uh. I'm surprised that that happened, hasn't happened before, but I guess, you know, their previous, you know, routine was one a year and now yeah. really ramped that up. Um, yeah. And, and let's be honest, they're, they're never like of the same, the, when they come out two a year, they're never like of the same quality to me. Like I forgot Onward was Pixar. Uh, 
I just because uh, Disney used to they may still like also have their own animated branch. Yeah. Oh, oh absolutely. Is it, they still have some things, right? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Fro- Frozen, I guess. Yeah. yeah, Raya and the Last Dragon, which is out now, oh, um, yeah. is also just just Disney. I haven't seen it yet, but uh, huh. the Mole Agent is the first Chilean movie nominated outside the international film category. Um, let's see another this round. Documentary, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Another round is the third non-English language film to receive a nomination in only director and no other foreign language film or international feature film categories. After Women in the Dunes and Fellini's Satyricon. Do you think that some of these facts, Eric, that like we're kind of like the uh, sports analysts? that oh wait, i mean yeah i mean i mean yes you can kind of search for a first anything after a while especially especially in the sports stuff you're like oh you know on sundays in april he's, he's shooting a 53.6 percent from the line through. and i'm like okay yeah i guess that's technically true but i never like how did you find this and why does this matter like it's, right <laughs> we're starting to get into the like you're when you said um Chloe Zhao was, you said, the first woman director to be nominated for directing and editing. Uh, like, obviously, that's not typically a role that a director would have as well. Right. Um, so it's still impressive. I'm just saying, like, I can't even think of how many directors also have editing nominations. I guess Soderbergh and um, a few others, but that's probably rare for that even to be shared. Right. Yeah. And the last big one that I have, unless you have some that you thought of, Eric, is uh, another fun one for me. Bad Boys for Life is only the fourth film in 44 years to be the highest grossing release of its year and get shut out at the Oscars. Um, through other movies that have done that, Three Men and a Baby, Spider-Man 3, and The Hunger Games <laughs> Catching Fire, that is not elite company there. But uh... Wow. Well, I, I'm more shocked that Three Men and a Baby was the number one movie of whatever right? year that was. That's the first thing I thought when I was reading it. I was like, really? Like, <laughs> but kids, you know, people just really flock to uh, Steve Gutenberg, Ted Dance, and, and um, who's the other one? Really? Tom Selleck. Yeah, 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 yeah. One you forget about is Tom Selleck. Come on now. We need to talk about that. I don't even, I saw the movie, I think, as a kid. Why do they have a baby? Anyway, that's, I don't even remember. Like, do they find this kid or something? That's like, a, it's like an infant. I don't, yeah, I, I, I don't honestly know. don't. I need to. I need to. I need to rewatch it. See Pete what America's movie are turning off our show right now. I'm telling you. <laughs> and then there was like three men and a little lady or yeah. a little something. I don't know. Wow. And I'm pretty sure there was, there was three men in a uh, a teenage prostitute was the third one. Yeah, the yeah three men in a fully consenting adult was the last one. <laughs> yeah. Please, now that movie needs to be made. That's that the, was. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Depending on the streaming website you go to, you could probably find it. <laughs> um but but I, I will say for obviously for for bad boys for life like it has to come with an asterisk i mean we didn't have a lot of time we, for we top grossing about some of those stats in in a previous episode um how many firsts happened this year and um the fact that i mean now yeah. this year is obviously different since um godzilla vs kong is is really i don't know if i want to say yeah. lighting up the box office but it's certainly dominating so in the past yeah I mean, for, uh, in, uh, the way the past year has gone, it's a huge hit. It wouldn't have been in normal times pre-pandemic, but now it's like, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, Eric, are there any others that you can think of that we might have forgotten or didn't mention? You know, I mean, those those are probably like the, the best ones. Um, there and was Paul also Pinnell something. being the that... first woman to be nominated for her feature film, directorial debut. Sorry? Emerald Fennell. Oh yeah, yeah. That is pretty Probably shocking. Yeah. Greta Gerwig, I think, is is probably was she nominated for director for Lady Bird? I think so. Um, yeah, that would. And you know what? So when you mentioned um, Venom, now when you look now at the cast of Black Panther, you have more Oscar nominees than in Venom, and and you probably have more Oscar like if say Chadwick Boseman wins, and Daniel. That's a good movie. <laughs> No, I know, I know, I know, but I'm just thinking it's super. Uh, are they both Marvel? All right, are they both Marvel? Uh, well, 
Well, Sony Marvel. You know. Yeah, it, this, then we're getting into the weeds and a different topic. But okay, all right, all right. All right. Well, I'm, you know, I'm just saying, whatever, guys. It's a comic book, okay? Look, just, <laughs> we don't give you an address to send your hate mail to, so you're just gonna have to, you're gonna have to just listen to. It. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> Chadwick Boseman, Daniel Kaluuya, both in Black Panther, and then you, Forrest Whitaker, Angela Bassett, like Lupita Nyong'o. You know, it's like, all right, I guess that would be the most decorated. You know, I say that. Again, we're not having the proper uh, research, but technically, you know, Avengers oh, Endgame might be one of the most decorated. But oh, yeah, that's a good point. That's no, good. well, be- only because everybody that is probably that. yeah, because everyone in Hollywood is in that movie, uh, and then they all get wiped out. I think right, or, or the or the other one, but Infinity War, yeah. Hey, hey, yeah. Come on, you need to brush up on your MCU. You too. know, I don't watch these historical dramas. Infinity War, <laughs> Captain America, Civil War, the bubble, blah, 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 you know. Blah, blah. Um, and then the other thing I thought was interesting was that uh, for Mank, it made a historic feat for being the seventh black and white film to be, again, this is one of those stats that you would never think of because you're just connecting the dots, but the seventh black and white film to be nominated for costume design, and it's the 17th black and white film to be nominated for cinematography. Uh, since up until 1967, there were there was a cinematography black and white category and a right. cinematography yeah. color category. So since 1967, when they stopped that, um, Mank is now the 17th film black and white film to be nominated for cinematography since 1967, um, which I thought was interesting. And I so, think that that number will increase because having a black and white movie is, you know, like it can be a novelty in these times. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Depending on who the director is and you know what the subject matter is, obviously, but it can be it can be welcoming if it's spaced out enough, you know, and if it's done the right way. In the case of this movie, obviously it made sense, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know what's funny you mentioned that it's spaced out and stuff, because the last film to be nominated for cinematography that was in black and white was last year. Do you, can you recall what it was? Oh geez. It was last year in black and white. Oh my gosh! Why can't I think of it? It's 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 the lighthouse, Robert. Right, Arden. right, right. Well, yeah, I never uh, I never actually got a chance to see it, so that's uh, what it's good. About. I mean, it's good. Also, surprising that the Academy took to, well, they just got one nomination, so they didn't really embrace it. But um, it's yeah, it's just it's just cool that you can go the artist, obviously, but that was a big hit all around. Right, right. Um, and um, maybe Cold War or either. Yeah, I, I do oh, think yeah. the black, black and white films will kind of have that extra pull for that. Yeah, well. because, yeah, because it tends to bring out, you know, yeah. that feature more sometimes. sometimes. Yeah, and and the um, other set I, I noticed that was cool was obviously with Chadwick Boseman being a posthumous nominee and probably a posthumous winner. Um, he is the seventh performer to receive a posthumous nomination the others were james dean who got two after he passed away it's incredible he passed away and he kept working it was <laughs> that, that guy was talented um you know and uh the only other two posthumous winners were spencer tracy for guess who's coming to dinner he had passed away uh and peter finch for network and heath ledger of course for for the dark knight so, right. so It'll, it'll uh, and it seems like Chadwick Boseman is definitely going to win. So um, that's also cool. I mean, I, I also I also don't. I mean, you know, you don't want to see the person pass away, but it also seems like that has become something that's a little bit more regular, I guess. But I guess the circumstances and everything kind of have to line up. <laughs> yeah, well. and you know, I this this some like this, especially if the person wins, becomes like one of the biggest parts of their legacy. I feel like. You know, even if they don't win and they're just nominated, like they go down as somebody who left us too soon. You know, in absolutely, absolutely. yeah. I mean, Andrew Tracy's case obviously was a little bit different. He had an entire career behind yeah. him. But in the case of somebody like James Dean, certainly, and uh, and Heath Ledger and Chadwick Boseman, you know, it becomes looked at as wow, this person left us too soon, right when they were giving us really great stuff. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and mentioning those names uh, too, it's like, well, they had just completed the film, and so their passing is usually something even like more tragic because right. they were just yeah. literally working, right? So, um, absolutely, it, yeah, it's bro. 
Well, we'll leave you with this one. Uh, and it's the first year, first in 93 years of the Academy that two women are nominated in the best director in the same year with Emerald Fennell and Chloe Zhao, which is a, a great thing, obviously. And uh, I have a and feeling- We almost had, had, we almost had, had three. Yeah. So, Regina, King, Regina King, we almost had three. I, I think that's what- that we were three. going to have three. Yeah, yeah. But, but it was not to be, but I'm sure we are going to have a female winner this year. Um, if we don't- Maybe Glenn really Close know. should direct a movie. Maybe that's how she wins. Glenn Close can direct. Uh, uh, Wouldn't that be know. somewhat of like a slap in the face? Like <laughs> maybe not a slap in the face, but like <laughs> you know, she's got to produce a movie. She's never produced a movie. I'm sure she has. She can get some. It's also funny because um, Hillbilly Elegy, the other lead of that movie, is Amy Adams, and she has six nominations and no wins, and she's well on her way to like having her own record suited up. So well, I have a uh, you're gonna get there. Yeah, I'm sure they thought, well, we'll put Amy Adams and Glenn Close together. One of them's got a winner. <laughs> so it's one streak has to end, but apparently, apparently sadly, no. a uh, better subject matter, and if they were going to shoot for that. That's, yeah, that's true. You know, it'd be funny if uh, Glenn Close won, and she was, like, one of, like, six people in the screenplay. Like, Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> I think so I... Get to, like, you, it's kind of like, a what type of face would you make if you won for that after all the year, like? Yeah. that would be I, I think she should just be one of the writers on Borat 3 and then she'll probably she'll probably win uh, I think that yes. would be yeah something to look yeah, for you never win for your best work and you know in her case you never even win for your right profession so <laughs> we'll see. we're rewriting history but that's okay I, we would both love to see that um, yes yes anyway let us know uh what you think of some of these trivia <laughs> trivia and stats let us know what you think of the Oscars, but we will be reviewing that uh, hopefully soon. Um, for Eric, my name is Chad, and we will see you next time.